Hey there, welcome to another video. So in this video, we're going to talk about the graphs of tangent and cotangent, much like we talked about the graphs of sine and cosine, and then another video on how to transform those. And we're going to do the same thing here. So we're going to discuss in this video where tangent and cotangent come from graphically. So back to the inner circle, we're going to take a look at that and see where these points come from. Why tangent and cotangent? look the way that they do. Then in the next video, we're going to shift them around. So this can be kind of a quicker video for us, um, just getting a feel for why, why in the world there is a vertical asymptote every so often on tangent and cotangent, why we have this repeated x-intercept every so often when ta with tangent and cotangent, how they're related to one another, whether we have even or odd functions out of them. So that's what we're, we're, gain we're gaining some understanding here. We also want to pay close attention to some of these key features right here. Because what's going to happen in the next few videos is I'm going to show you how to transform tangent and cotangent. And we're going to see, oh, if I can identify the period, then I know that something happens at the ends, something happens in the center, and something happens at the quarters of the period, just like sine and cosine. And so that's very important for us to understand. So let's take a look at tangent first. And there's something I need to point out. Remember that tangent is that relationship right there on a unit circle. So tangent of theta, the central angle, is given by the y-coordinate over the x-coordinate. So when we get down to our graphs and we start plotting some points, we really want to make sure that we're comparing for every single angle, which and remember angles can represent the arc length, so any real number um, on a unit circle, that's because it's a unit circle with a radius of one. And what we're doing basically is taking a real number, allowing it to be an arc length that is also the same thing as a central angle, and therefore we can find out a ratio of an, a y coordinate divided by an x coordinate for any real number that we can plug into tangent. And these no, real numbers that don't give us anything out, we call them undefined. We're going to get a real vertical asymptote. So let's get started now. We're going to start with tangent on where the x intercepts are. So we're going to take a look at this and go, okay, let's see. If, if tangent theta is y over x, then x-intercepts happen where the numerator equals zero and the denominator doesn't. That's the only way to get zero out of a fraction is where the numerator equals zero and denominator doesn't. So if tangent of theta is y over x, then tangent of theta or any real number is going to equal zero if y is zero when x is not. Now, there's nowhere where both y and x are zero, so that's very easy. We're just going to take a look and see at what angles y equals zero. Well, the first one is here at zero. So tangent of zero is going to give us zero. Tangent of pi is going to give us zero. Why? Well, because tangent compares the y coordinate over the x. Zero over one is zero. Zero over negative one is zero. And those are the only two places on a unit circle where the y is zero and the x is not. So we have tangent of zero is zero over one. Tangent of pi is zero over negative one. Those are both zero. So what's going to happen is we're going to have zeros at plug in zero. This relates to, remember, this relates to an angle here. So tangent of zero says plug in zero. Okay, you got it. You're going to get zero over one. That's zero. There will be, therefore, an x-intercept at the origin. Now, how about pi? Plug in pi, we're going to get tangent of pi is 0 over 1. That's also 0. And this is true for every multiple of pi. We are going to get x-intercepts every 0 plus k pi, or minus k pi. So there's going to be another 0 at negative pi, and negative 2 pi, at pi, and at 2 pi, and at 3 pi. We can keep going and going and going and going and going. What we're going to find out with tangent is the period is half of what it is for sine, cosine, and, and secant and cosecant. It's going to be just pi. And we're going to get a 0 every, every 0, or an x-intercept every 0, and then pi, and then 2 pi, 3 pi, all the way forever. So we could write something like that. Maybe make a little note that x-intercepts happen at 0 plus k pi. Now, something unique happens with tangent that didn't happen with sine and cosine. We're going to come up with some values that they're undefined. Now, sine and cosine, they were defined everywhere. Our domain was all real numbers. That was fantastic, but tangent doesn't act like that. Why not? 
Well, because sine is just the y coordinate, and the y coordinate kind of oscillates between negative one and one, and and cosine was just the x coordinate and that oscillated between negative one and one, and between that interval we can get our real numbers negative one one to one, and this angle uh, goes all the way around from zero to three hundred sixty degrees or zero to two pi, and there's never an angle that's excluded from that, and every single one of those is mapped to an output either x or y. There was never a domain issue, there was never a range issue, but tangent is a ratio. So tangent is y over x. Now we know something about fractions. We know that when our denominator is zero, we have a significant issue. We have something that's undefined. So let's take a look at our unit circle and figure out for which angles x is zero. You see, at the angles where x is zero, we're gonna get something over zero. Something over zero is undefined. Okay, so if x is zero, we get problems. Um, x is zero here, and x is zero here. Or think about it as a negative angle, negative pi over two. x is zero at pi over two. x is also zero at negative pi over two, or at three pi over two. Well, every place that x is zero, tangent of that angle, it's gonna be undefined. So let's look at that. Tangent of pi over two is one over zero. Uh, undefined. Tangent of 3 pi over 2, well that's negative 1 over 0, but it's still undefined. Tangent of negative pi over 2 is negative 1 over 0, that's still undefined. What that means for us, remember, the angle is what we have on our x-axis right now. So we're taking these real numbers, thinking of them as an arc length that equals a central angle, so any real number, and then we're evaluating it with our unit circle and saying, okay, um, our angle represents something on this x-axis. Well, it's all pi's and stuff. Pi over 2, negative pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2 are going to have problems. So y again is because we're dividing y by x, and if x is 0, it gives us something that's undefined. That means that pi over 2, tangent of pi over 2 is undefined. So right here, we're gonna have what's called a vertical asymptote. Um, you found this out like in the college algebra portion of, of pre-calculus that any time you divide a fraction by zero, you get a vertical asymptote if you can't cancel it out, and that's exactly the same logic that we have right here. We are going to have a vertical asymptote at pi over two. We also learned we'd have one at negative pi over two and at three pi over two. And in fact, we're gonna have it at pi over two plus k pi. Now, wait a minute. Plus k pi was the same thing for our x-intercepts. Plus k pi is the same thing for our vertical asymptotes. Plus k2 pi was for sine and cosine, that stuff. It's plus the period. So every period, this is going to repeat again and again and again and again. So at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 and negative pi over 2 and 5 pi over 2 and pi over 2 plus k pi, we are going to have vertical asymptotes. And that's what we have here. So we have vertical asymptotes at pi over two. Yeah, we get one of those. Plus every k pi, every multiple of pi. So one pi or negative one pi. And then you add that. So that's pi over two plus one pi would be three pi over two. Plus another pi would be five pi over two. Minus pi would be negative pi over two or negative three pi over two. And we can get a vertical asymptote on the entire x-axis, every pi over two plus or minus k pi. Uh, well, actually plus k pi. k can be positive or negative integers, and that's why we write it that way. And this also creates a domain issue for us. You see, with sine and cosine, our domain is all real numbers. You can plug in anything. Uh, but with tangent, it's not. How we define our domain is all real numbers except for those values that are undefined. And that's what we have here. We have some undefinedness, if you will, at pi over two and every k pi. So we're gonna write that. So domain is all real numbers, but x cannot equal pi over two. We saw that. Why not? Again, because at pi over two, x is zero for this particular angle, and y over x is gonna give you something undefined. Now, please get this. We're about to discover that the period of, of tangent is pi. The reason why this k pi is there is saying, Look, if you have something that's undefined at pi over two, then if you go another period, it's still gonna be undefined. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cycle of a function. It's going to repeat every single period. And so that means that if you add the period to it or a multiple of the period or subtract the period, you're gonna get another undefined place. And that's what that says. So this should be the same thing in your head. You should understand that, hey, due to the fact that I have vertical asymptotes, every place on my unit circle, the x-coordinate is zero, 
Well, then what that means is that every so often, I'm going to get a vertical asymptote at the same interval. That also means that vertical asymptotes create domain problems for us. So our domain is, yeah, all real numbers except pi over 2 plus or minus k pi. How about our range? Well, now, this is, this is quite interesting. Our range for sine and cosine is negative 1 to 1, but that's not true for tangent. You see, for tangent, we can start getting uh, comparisons of 1 divided by very, very, very small numbers. That's going to create something that's more than more than 1 for by a long shot, close to positive infinity and all the way down to negative infinity. And that's typically what vertical asymptotes do for us. They say, if, as you get closer to it, you got to you kind of make, make a choice. The function makes a choice here, not really, but it says you're going to have to go all the way like this or all the way like this. And that's exactly what happens with our tangent. So before we get there, before we get our range is all real numbers, we're going to write it down in a minute, I want to discover how these graphs actually look, whether they're climbing or whether they're falling. And they're going to be kind of an S-curve for us. So we're going to take a look at pi over 4, negative pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and we're going to see this pattern emerge. So let's take a look at it. How about pi over 4? Tangent of pi over 4 is going to compare the y over the x, and they're the same. So wait a minute. Tangent of pi over 4 is going to give us 1. Now tangent negative pi over 4, that's the same thing as three. Uh, sorry, 7 pi over 4. So tangent of negative pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4, they're the same. We're going to get negative root 2 over 2 divided by positive square root 2 over 2. Well, that's negative 1. Now, how about 3 pi over 4? Huh, 3 pi over 4 is right here. That's also negative 1. You should see it. You should see y divided by x is negative 1. And 5 pi over 4, tangent of 5 pi over 4 says a negative divided by negative, that's a positive one. Now what I really want to, I really want you to see the repetition here. Do you see that this is repeating negative 1, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 1, vertical asymptote, vertical asymptote, vertical asymptote. Now how often are they repeating? Well, they're repeating more often than every 2 pi. In fact, if you take a look at this from 0 to pi, that's only adding pi. 0 plus pi is pi. Or negative pi over 2 plus pi is pi over 2. Or negative pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4 is adding pi to that. So this period for tangent is more often than 2 pi. It's every pi. Now, why? I really want you to get why this is, not just memorize it, it's easy to memorize it, but understand why. The reason why is because if tangent is a ratio, it's comparing a positive and a negative. Well, the reason why tangent occur, has a period sooner than 2 pi, it's every pi, is because positives divided by positives and negatives divided by negatives gives you, gives you the same output. Also, positive over negative or negative over positive give you the same output. What I mean by that is, we are going to get positives divided by positives here, negatives positives divided by negatives here, but then negative divided by negative and positive divide, negative divided by a positive gives you the same exact results. So these two quadrants and these two quadrants have exactly the same tangent for whatever those angles are. So tangent of angles here and here, they start repeating. Well, what is a re repetition but a period? And that's exactly what the period means, how often things repeat. So tangent repeats after these first two quadrants. Wait a second. These first two quadrants are 0 to pi, and then pi to 2 pi. That's every pi. That is the reason why the period of tangent and therefore co cotangent is going to be pi. And we can see it. Vertical asymptotes repeat every pi. It says right there. X-intercepts repeat every pi. It says right there. We kind of noticed that. We're just putting some meat on the bones now. So how this graph looks, it almost looks like a cubic. And it's going to repeat every pi interval. So the period's pi is going to repeat every pi. Now, is it even or odd? 
Well, due to the fact that this is symmetric about the origin, this is an odd function. We can also see that opposite inputs, pi, and pi over 4 and negative pi over 4, are giving us opposite outputs. And that's exactly what, what tangent does. Um, this is also what we'll say it's, it's odd on its period. And so if we start shifting this around, we start getting oddness, but it, it moves with that period. It would not be odd in relation to the y-axis if we start transfor transforming this uh, from, from that original spot. So we've learned why x-intercepts are at where they are. And we've learned why vertical asymptotes are where they are. We've learned why the period's even pi. And we've kind of shown that. Um, now some important things to remember. I need you to remember something. You see, what's going to happen in the next video is we're going to take one period of tangent and we're going to start transforming it. We're going to shift it up. And we're going to shift it down. Or we're going to start stretching it and reflecting it, um, changing the period. Here's what I need you to know. When we start changing the period, it might change how, how far we stretch this horizontally or compress it, but it won't change the following. It will not change that vertical asymptotes happen at the ends of your period. This is one period. This is another period. The period is still pi, and a vertical asymptote is going to happen at the ends of your period. That's what I want you to write down. So let's take a look at that. Let's kind of zo zoom in right here. If this is one period, this is what tangent looks like on the period from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. That's from here to here. Well, if, our, if this is one period and vertical asymptotes happen at the end, what happens in the center? Our one and only x-intercept happens at the center of our period. So periods here, vertical asymptotes at the end of your period. We're going to use this next time. X-intercept in the center. Cool. So the x-intercept is at the center of the period. And then at the quarters of our period, I, hopefully you're seeing this. Hopefully you're seeing this. Like we did with sine and cosine, we said at the ends something happens, at the center something happens, at the quarter something happens. For tangent, at the ends we have vertical asymptotes, at the center we have an x-intercept, at the quarters, we have negative 1 and positive 1, respectively. I'm not going to show the key points now, but I certainly will when we get to graphing this in transformations. What I want you to remember is that here, here's what's going to happen. We're going to firstly identify our tangent and our, our period. We're going to mark the period on our x-axis. Right away, after we mark that period, we're going to go to the ends, vertical asymptotes. Go to the center, put an x-intercept. Go to the quarters of your period and do your x, uh, do your negative one and your positive one. Or at least write your key points. So we'll identify the quarters and write our key points. Our key points will be first quarter comma negative one, second quarter comma, or I, I suppose it would be third quarter, third quarter comma positive one. And then our key points from there will manipulate this. It'll make... Um, it's a, it's a little bit not concrete. That's the theory behind it. So I'll show you that when we get there. But at this point, I need you to really re recognize that, yeah, at the ends of the period, we get vertical asymptote. At the center is an x-intercept. And here at the first quarter, let's call it, second quarter, and the third quarter, we're going to have negative one and positive one. Those will create key points, and we'll manipulate them next time. So let's move on, and let's talk about cotangent of x. So with cotangent of x, instead of having tangent theta equals y over x, cotangent is x over y. It's a reciprocal. So we're going to make this really easy. When you reciprocate things, zeros, so 0 over 1 changes to 1 over 0, and 1 over 0 changes to 0 over 1. Now why am I saying that? Well, because if we compare this to tangent, which is why I left it on the board, all of our zeros become undefined, and all of our undefined vertical asymptotes become zeros. Now let's check that on the unit circle, make sure that's true. So we take a look at tangent. Remember, we're talking about tangent here. When x was zero, we had things that were undefined. So that would be at pi over two, and negative pi over two, and three pi over two. We got undefined, where x was zero. But if you look at cotangent, well, that reciprocates it. Now x is on the numerator, y is on the denominator. So at pi over two, we no longer get undefined for cotangent like we did for tangent we get just 0 over 1. Well, that's 0. 
What that means is that for cotangent at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, every place we had a vertical asymptote for tangent, we're going to have an x-intercept for cotangent. So negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 and x-intercepts are now going to cause vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes, like we're seeing right now, are causing x-intercepts. So at pi over 2, plus or minus k pi. Remember, these are reciprocals of one another. They're very related. Now how about vertical asymptotes? Uh, well, tangent was 0 when y was 0, like here. So we'd have y over x, 0 over 1. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. That's 0. But cotangent says reciprocate that. Well, now that's 1 over 0. That's undefined. So where tangent had zeros at 0 and pi and 2 pi and negative pi, cotangent can have asymptotes there, vertical asymptotes, wherever our tangent had an x-intercept. So an x-intercept at 0 for tangent is a vertical asymptote at 0 for cotangent. We can see it. At 0, this would be 1 over 0 for cotangent. That's undefined. At pi, that's negative 1 over 0 for cotangent. Remember, cotangent is x over y. That would be undefined. And at negative pi, that would be negative 1 over 0. In fact, every period here, every pi plus or minus, so 0 plus or minus pi, every k pi is going to give you a vertical asymptote. Finally, this is kind of weird, but notice that cotangent and tangent are going to have exactly the same value for pi over 4 and negative pi over 4 and every quarter of the period. Wait a minute, what? Yeah, for sure, because tangent of pi over 4 is 1. Cotangent just reciprocates that. When you reciprocate 1 or negative 1, you still get 1 or negative 1. And so we're going to get exactly the same outputs, but the period is different, so it's going to look different. And we can, we can see it, it just it looks funny because it's broken up separately, but look, here's negative pi over 4 and negative 1, that's the same exact value. Here's pi over 4, positive 1, pi over 4, positive 1, not, not a problem. 3 pi over 4, negative 1, that's right. These are repeating every pi, that's what periods do, they repeat things every so often. If I take negative pi over 4 and I add pi, I'm at 3 pi over 4. Add pi again, I'd be at, well, whatever, it's past that. If I take a negative 3 pi over 4 and add pi and the pi over 4 and add it again, I'm at 5 pi over 4. It's repeating every pi. Every time I add pi, it repeats that output just like we did for x-intercepts, just like we did for vertical asymptotes. Notice that these things are switched because they're reciprocals. X-intercept became vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes became x-intercepts, but the period did not change. It just sort of moved. And now, now we're going to take a look at the graphs. These graphs look quite similar. It's almost like you phase shift and then reflect them. Kind of what you do. And we get something about like that. So we're going to fill out the domain and the range and whether it's even or odd. Um, it's still actually going to be odd. And we'll fill out the period, but it's going to, all that's going to happen is that these things change from where our vertical asymptote was on um, on tangent to where a vertical asymptote is now for cotangent. So the vertical asymptotes happen at 0, we got that, and at pi, and negative pi, and every other multiple of, of pi. So that means that we cannot have x values, these, these inputs, that are 0 or any multiple of pi. How about a range? Much like tangent, it's all real numbers. And that's due to the ratio of dividing 1 by some values that are getting very small, um, and very small values divided by 1, both positive and negative, we can get some of these, all of these outputs from negative infinity to positive infinity. Even or odd, this is still an odd graph. If you think about rotating the entire function, 180 degrees if you will, or about the origin, you're going to get that this is odd. Our period does not change, it's still pi. And even this doesn't change. So we are going to notice this. We're still going to get, if the period is pi from 0 to pi, it's still the same period, we're still going to get a vertical asymptote at the ends of our period. We're still going to get an x-intercept at the center of our period. That's, that's absolutely true. Um, we're going to get negative 1 and 1, but they are reversed. Negative 1 is at the first quarter, and sorry, positive 1 is at the first quarter, and negative 1 is at the third quarter. So I'm going to switch these and say this is for cotangent. 
So one thing that makes it a little bit difficult is because tangent and cotangent have the same period, but they don't start at the same place. Notice that tangent's period, if you want to, starts at, at negative pi over two and ends at pi over two, but cotangent is zero to pi. That's typically how we define these four inverses that we're gonna talk about in a little while. Um, I need you to memorize that. So even though they have the same period, how we are gonna manipulate this in the next video is we're gonna take a look at our key points. Sure, we're gonna take a look at, hey, uh, we have a key point of negative pi over four or the first quarter negative one, third quarter positive one. For cotangent, it's first quarter positive one, third quarter negative one. But we are gonna start manipulating the period. We need to understand that with tangent, the original period is negative pi over two to pi over two. And for cotangent, it's zero to pi. So make sure that we're realizing that as we get to the next video, because we need to know where to start. We don't start at zero like we did for sine and cosine. We start at negative pi over two. We kind of split, we split zero with that first period for tangent. Cotangent does start at zero. So we'll take a look at that when we get there. I hope you're doing well. Hope you're enjoying the videos.